New Rick and Morty starting Sunday, June 20th at 11 p.m. Oh yeah, it's gonna be a good summer. This video is brought to you by ExpressVPN. Dan Harmon was not messing around when he said there'd never be a long wait between Rick and Morty seasons again. After season 4 wrapped up last May with Space Beth, the anticlimactic death of Tammy, and Phoenix Person hopefully being sent on the path back to Bird Person, Rick and Morty will be returning already for its fifth season, premiering June 20th, 2021. A normal television break like this basically hasn't happened since season 2, people. Both season 3 and season 4 debuted on television after about two years of a brutal hiatus. Considering the crew is already writing the seventh season, it's a pretty safe bet that adults will stick to the ideal summer schedule for Rick and Morty every year going forward. At the very least, they'll get it out on a yearly basis, whether that be summer or fall. And I imagine not splitting up the season months apart, but instead airing it whole with a break here and there will serve as a better way to build up momentum. But today, I'm not just here to talk about the trailer for the new season, but I'm also here to talk about how the face-off of two ricks may be the return of the original C-137 rank, and how this trailer presents to us the theme of Season 5. Season 4 continued to demonstrate the cracks in Rick's grip on the family that the Season 3 finale unceremoniously dumped onto us, as half of the episodes in Season 4 showed the Smith family giving Rick more pushback than ever, especially Morty, clashing with Rick on numerous occasions accumulating into Rick losing a great deal of the family's respect, or at least interest, as both Beths came together to shit-talk their dad. The final scene of Season 4 had Rick come to terms with the fact that he's a terrible father, realizing that he himself is unaware of which Beth is the real one. He tries to fall back on the sentiment of at least being a pretty good friend, but a deranged Phoenix person serves to remind him that the universe begs to differ. A lot of scenes in this trailer support the notion that Season 5 will use its stories to explore just how bad Rick is at all of his relationships. His relationship with his daughter, his relationship with his son-in-law, his relationship with Summer, his relationship with Morty, and his relationship with himself. So let's run through this trailer, stitch these scenes together to figure out what stories we can expect, and get into heavy theory territory with this Rick. And before we jump in, please be sure to throw this video a like and subscribe to the roundtable for some of the best and fastest Rick and Morty content around during this upcoming season. Something worth addressing right out the gate is, where the hell is Space Beth? How is this show going to introduce a cooler, more Rickish rendition of the modern animated MILF and then not give us a single hint of her in the trailer? Well, simple. She's probably not in the season, dog. One of the more annoying habits of Rick and Morty is that in a time of serialized animated series with an ongoing narrative, Rick and Morty is still only dipping its toes with one or two episodes a season that really build upon the more interesting plot points of the series and the characters within them. The writers also love to play hot potato of plot points, often introducing a new one after resolving an old one. Case in point, we got Space Beth when they killed off Tammy and saved Bird Person. So I really don't expect much from the character this season, aside from a name drop here and there. Like an episode starting with the family getting some sort of space swag from Space Beth. At most, whatever ends up happening in the big story episode of this season could involve her. But enough about what we don't have, let's talk about what we do have. Starting with the Rick's Nemesis plot. A few snippets in this trailer are all from an episode that we first got a look at last summer during the virtual San Diego Comic Con. Stuff like Morty carrying Rick through a field of multidimensional shards and nearly crash landing on Earth, bouncing off a palm tree, is the cold open for this episode. If you expect these things to be plot relevant, it's sad to say they probably won't be, at least not right away. We have all seen enough episodes to know that, if it's a cold open adventure, it won't have too much impact on the episode itself. Though it's worth mentioning that we already may have a taste of the season's continuity, a recurring plot point potentially being an actual relationship between Morty and Jessica. Morty finally gets a real win, maybe. In the Comic-Con sneak peek, Morty calls Jessica and confesses his love to her, assuming he'll die before hearing her rejection. But to his surprise, she shows interest and even tries to make plans with him, inspiring Morty to live another day. I wouldn't be surprised if that's the B-plot of this episode, but I think it won't be the only episode that shines a light on this relationship. Rick's nemesis, Mr. Nimbus, is described as a horny ocean man who follows Rick to the Smith family household in a very eye-catching vehicle. We later see Mr. Nimbus giving Rick the work as he beats the shit out of them in the garage. Building off the ideal theme of this season, I think this episode will largely explore how Rick can't even maintain a nemesis without being shitty to them. 
We already know he ghosted this dude. He clearly went out of his way to escape Mr. Nimbus. And I wonder how Beth will react to that information. I feel like there's gonna be some ridiculous reveal that makes us all give Rick the side eye in judgment. Man, looking back on all the seasons, Rick has so many cool gadgets and gizmos. And after thinking it over, I really think my favorite of his is ExpressVPN, the sponsor of today's video. Privacy and the internet don't always see eye to eye. And through ExpressVPN, your internet connection is rerouted through a secure, encrypted server. So you can surf the web anonymously without anyone looking over your shoulder. Incognito mode isn't hiding you from anyone other than your family. Every site you visit is still tracked by your internet providers. And said providers can even sell that data to ad companies. Ad companies! <laughs> ExpressVPN is super easy. All it takes is a literal press of a button and can be accessed on your computer, tablet, or smartphone. No matter where you go, you're always protected. Not to mention, summer is on the horizon. As the world totally returns to normal and you're hanging out with your friends, you might want something new to watch. And ExpressVPN gives you way more shows and movies on streaming, as you can access catalogs from all around the world. If I change my VPN location to the UK, I can go on Netflix and watch cartoons that are scattered on other services in the US, like Rick and Morty, Close Enough, and Final Space. Even some YouTube videos are region locked, but I turn on my VPN and look, they aren't anymore. ExpressVPN is the fastest VPN on the market, with glowing reviews, 24-7 customer service, and easy access. You truly can access it anywhere, and you can get three months free with a 12-month plan only by clicking the link in the description, expressvpn.com slash roundtable. Again, this three free months is in addition to the 12-month plan. Take back your internet privacy today. Next up is the Rick, Jerry, and Beth plot that definitely raises some questions. As it seems Rick and Beth, dressed up as kinky Cenobites, are on a mission to rescue Jerry. Interesting enough with the whole theme of the season angle, Rick reinforces the fact that he doesn't have any love for Jerry. Rick loves his daughter. His daughter loves her husband. But there is no bridge connecting one another. Who even knows how we end up to this point? Maybe Beth and Jerry want to spice things up in the bedroom. And it somehow spirals into this. I'm excited to have this combination. Rick's presence eliminates the possibility of Beth and Jerry arguing for the duration of their storyline. And the less of that, the better. Ultimately, I think this journey will serve Rick as he tries to gain Beth's respect back, which may or may not work out. Moving forward, it seems as if Jessica will be around the family more. She's present in a weird time travel plot with a canine warrior. And there's a snippet of Morty, Jessica, and Rick in some sort of futuristic gladiator pit, surrounded by giant canine mechs. I assume these two situations are related. If Rick and Morty has taught me anything, it's that the universe is against Morty. Considering Jessica's presence in this episode, I anticipate for her relationship with Morty to correlate with these shenanigans. Perhaps Morty being in a relationship causes doomsday for this race of puppers. Which only makes Jessica want to be in the relationship more. Because then it becomes a forbidden love. Rick's role in this episode will probably have him try to help Morty out in this blossoming relationship, only for his attempts to fall flat and annoy Morty. Or maybe Morty and Jessica get roped into Rick's shenanigans. Rick's all, come on buddy, I need ya. You can bring your little girlfriend too. And if something happens to Jessica, that would only put a greater strain on Rick and Morty's relationship. Moving into big theory territory, I want to touch on Rick versus Rick. We see Rick go toe-to-toe -to -toe with another duplicate of himself within the Smith family household. Although, there's notably two of each of the Smiths present, with a third Rick seemingly out of commission. I believe one of the Ricks trying to throw hands is none other than the true C-137 Rick. What do I mean? Well, it's a popular theory that our Rick isn't from C-137, and we shouldn't believe that just because our Morty is. There's no evidence that Rick belongs to that dimension, especially with discrepancies between his memories, as shown in close Rick counters of the Rick kind, and the period of time he wouldn't have been in Beth's life. Considering the state of the Smith family, one potentially being a clone, and two of them being from alternate dimensions entirely, and hell, this Jerry could be a mix-up at the Jerry daycare, I don't think a revelation like this shakes anything up with the family dynamic too much. It just raises more questions about Rick's origins. And of course, that information could change everything. 
While it's entirely possible that these two ricks could be the work of clones, or maybe even more time fuckery, just hear me out. Right before the beginning of Rick and Morty, our Rick finds a timeline where another Rick also left his family. Like how later in season 1, Rick finds a timeline where he and Morty conveniently just died. And our Rick assumes life in C-137, unaware of when C-137 Rick will return, if he returns at all. C-137 got Cronenberg, and aside from a quick check-in with the now Warrior Smith family at the start of Season 3, we never got any follow-up. So imagine the C-137 Rick returning to his home dimension, only to find it ruined. And he knows this must be the work of another Rick. C-137 Rick confronts our Rick, wanting to kill him and assume his place to make things even which the family would obviously be hesitant about. So our Rick makes a suggestion. Instead of taking over this dimension, why don't we just find you a new dimension to call home, bud? Which is why we have this scene of two Smith families. One version of the family belongs to whatever dimension they're in, and the third Rick also belongs to this dimension, but ends up as a casualty for the situation, or at the very least out of commission. Cause we don't need another Rick interfering. This episode could be a great deep dive for Rick, and I imagine a stunt like this would actually garner the attention of the Citadel of Ricks and Mortys bringing in a certain you-know-who at a later time. But that's probably wishful thinking in an otherwise fun episode concept, even as a standalone. But I really hope this is the case, as some of Rick and Morty's greatest moments come from playing with the status quo and defining an overarching story. Either way, I want more development from Rick out of this. From an engagement standpoint, we're long overdue to learn more about Rick's past without it being a cop-out, so I really hope this is the time to learn more. Alas, as always, we'll just have to wait and see what happens. In the meantime, I do want to know what you guys think. What are your thoughts on what the theme of Rick and Morty Season 5 could be? Are you excited for this season? Or are you a little burnt out on Rick and Morty? Let's get a dialogue rolling in the comments down below. And you can always tag us in your ramblings at RoundtableVids over on Twitter and Instagram. And you can also find me at Ostrich Fox. If you want to go the extra miles to support us, you can always check us out on Patreon. If you enjoyed what we had to say, please throw this video a like and subscribe to the Roundtable for more content. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you later.